Warning, this show may contain some crude humor and mild swearing. Listener discretion is advised. The show was produced by Geek Happy Network, creators of the very best in audible oracle entertainment. In other words, podcasts. If you enjoy listening to The Smorgasbord, remember to subscribe to the show on Spotify or on your favorite podcast app. Remember to leave a review. We'd love to hear your thoughts. This, this is Smorgasbord! Welcome to Smorgasbord, a show where we explore the rituals, myths, and all things strange about the world of food. I'm Mick, and here is my co-host, Angel. And today, we're talking about tea? Tea? Tea. Tea time? Tea time. My favorite time. Yeah, I guess it's we inspired by your um, high tea last episode funny thing about high tea is there's more of everything else than tea oh that's disappointing <laughs> there's a lot of i mean no there is a or there's is, plenty of tea but right. there's also like 18 million scones <laughs> yeah so it's not like you show up to a barbecue and all of a sudden it's just fried chicken i mean that would be awesome yeah i guess it would be i don't, I don't yeah. have any complaints true if that happens but you also have that story about chinese death tea that turned out not to be chinese <laughs> It's pretty metal. <laughs> Was it again? Death tea. It is Chinese, I thought. Oh. I don't know. As you can see, we definitely researched. Well, you, you, you were telling me you had a story about some friend of yours who talked about some oh, death tea. Oh, right. She calls it death tea. Right. But because whenever she makes it, she feels like she's dying. <laughs> so it's a, it's a tea, like when you're about to get sick. Right. You throw these ingredients together into boiling water. Okay. So if you're getting sick, and it is the season, because right. it's getting colder. Yeah. Um, so ginger, slice it up. Garlic, disgusting, but throw it in there. Wow. Lemons, chili peppers. And you can add a little bit of honey if you right. don't absolutely hate yourself. So it's all the things that, that are said to cure things. Yeah. But you just I don't know if they actually one. cure things, but they're just naturally antibiotic. Right. So if you're getting like a scratchy throat or feeling a cough coming on you drink that nasty ass tea <laughs> and like i have made it before it's right not, it's not as gross as it sounds i mean right. you don't have to do the garlic you can forego right. the garlic i mean that's the one that's oh, okay. yucky yeah fair enough so it's like it's death tea because you take it when you're dying yeah it's not so you take it so you can die no <laughs> okay. that's well, the opposite maybe they should she should call it a live tea right yeah <laughs> well i mean a few years ago apparently in san francisco there was a lady who died from drinking tea oh so that would be death tea i guess nice um, i mean not nice no. <laughs> <laughs> the appropriate yeah, <laughs> so apparently she bought this tea that contained aconite, which is a deadly poison that you get from a plant. Um, you probably know it more from a more familiar name called Wolfsbane. Ah, uh, yes. Um, and it's also called Monk's Hood, Helmet Flower, Chuanwu, Kawu, or Fuzi. I'm not guessing those are Chinese names. I thought <laughs> Ar- it's called Arcanite. Aconite. Um, it's Sounds called... like a Pokemon. I think it is a Pokemon. Aco- Aconite. 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 Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> pronouncing words is uh, not our strongest suit. We're very sleepy people. <laughs> yeah. Um, apparently it's usually used in Asia as a pain reliever, but if you don't process it properly, it can be poisonous. Um, so usually raw aconite is pretty poisonous, but you could kind of, I guess process the poison away out of it okay which is what a lot of political systems try to do as well um (laughs) symptoms can include numbness weakness in limbs paralysis which really just sounds like every day when i wake up so Mm, yeah Yeah. same or when i try to go to sleep yeah um it also causes low you're still awake (laughs) yeah (laughs) like you're just paralyzed yeah my body gave up (laughs) yeah (laughs) It also causes low blood pressure, pressure, chest pains, and sudden death. Uh-huh. And there's also no known antidote for this tea. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, there's really no antidote for sudden death. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like, well, what do we do? 
<laughs> nothing. <laughs> she dead. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, that's, that apparently happened a few years ago. Um, but today we're going to talk about something more than that. We're talking about teas in China, specifically about the mythology of Meng Po and her tea or soup of forgetfulness. But yeah, but before we do dive in a little bit into Meng Po, I think we should understand a little bit about what death is in China. Beginning with a diu? D-I-Y-U. Diu? Diu. Diu. This which, might be Canto, which yeah, I don't been. speak. I don't speak neither. <laughs> I know how to say wo. Wo hen ai chi jiao zi. <laughs> That means I love to eat dumplings. <laughs> <laughs> what I, I think I know how to say. Wo han gao ching. You're very happy? Yeah. <laughs> That's all I remember. Hey, not bad. Not bad. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we'll talk about the diu, which really in Chinese mythology essentially is the realm of the dead, or as we usually call it, hell. <sighs> so yeah, diu is just really... The realm of the dead or what we call hell. Um, unlike here in North America where our dominant religion or mythology is pretty much just Christianity, um, in China the mythology there is usually a mixture of Taoism, Buddhism, Buddhism, Buddhism. <laughs> Taoism, a... Buddhism, and whatever other cultural legends in each region. So as big as China is, it's so regional in its varieties as well. So I guess like how Christians have different Christians. Branches. Yeah, they fought yeah. each other for what they believed in. I don't know. Um, so this means that the interpretation of the Diu can have many regional variations. Um, but the one thing that is common about how people see it, the Diu is it's a maze of sorts where the dead go, um, souls go, to to suffer. <laughs> to suffer. <laughs> That's everyday life. Yeah. Imagine. I mean, why do you have to die to do that? Yeah, well, apparently if you don't do well in real life, you just have to not do well in the afterlife. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, this See, place... that's pretty subjective. What do you mean, not do well? I don't know, man. <laughs> I'm assuming the money has something to do with this and oh. success or whatever else. Well, you people... know, you're kind of born into the class you are. Yeah. The vertical integration is very hard. Yeah. Just saying. <laughs> um, so yeah, imagine a place of different doors, routes, levels, and whatnot. That's kind of how the deal is. Um, Wait, can I see what the... Do they have the Chinese character for the do? Sure. D-A-E. Yeah, I think that's how you say it. Okay. Okay, so <laughs> I'm definitely not pronouncing this correct. How is it? D-A-E. I don't, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it properly, but I know that I recognize okay. the symbols. So I'm just going to call it D-A-E <laughs> and see yeah. where we go from there. Cool. So from now on, the do is now the D-A-E. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Done. I might be wrong, so, but oh. I think I think that's how it's pronounced. Phil, Nick, and any of our three listeners who don't speak Mandarin. Maybe you do. Who knows? Maybe you do. Maybe you do. Maybe my mom Maybe will actually tells. listen, and she'll be like, oh. "Yeah, this is the one thing she'll listen to." She'll be like, "I'm disappointed. <laughs> you can't even <sighs> express your Chinese words properly." Nope, you little white devil. <laughs> <laughs> learned English and forgot everything else and then tried to learn Swedish <laughs> what is this <laughs> yeah so essentially that's the Diyayi um, it's believed that when you die you are sent to Yan, Yan Luo Wang who is the king of hell and here you're sent to a thing called the mirror of retribution which will judge you huh. that sounds like a paladin and wow yeah pretty much right <laughs> which um, I quit <laughs> but anyway <laughs> um, so this mirror of retribution will just judge you harshly, give you some side eye, and tell you whether you go to hell or paradise. Oh, sounds like Asian parents. Before you reincarnate again. Cool. Um, sadly, for the most part, yeah. Just like your parents, you all just end up in... Just you mostly just end up forever. in hell. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, when it comes to variations, I think there are some variations in this story as well. Um, another place there are variations are the number of levels or courts of hell you go through. So when you actually enter hell... You're subjected to a number of different various levels of hell. Um, it ranges from anywhere between 3 and 18. Um, each with a different kind of judge or king who rules that level. Um, usually each court will have a different punishment for you, and you need to go through it to atone for your sins. 
Um, I'm not going to go too deeply in this because we're going to take two hours to talk about all of that. There's but, many levels. Yeah. Are there any highlights? Yeah, well, I'm going to go through the ten levels of hell and just the names and the rulers of it. And maybe we can guess what they do. Okay. Um, oh, court, this is fun. Yeah, court number one, as we talked about, is the Mirror of Retribution, which is run by King Wang, King Wang Wan, or whatever. Oh, Kendall Wang. Sorry. <laughs> and that's where you're judged to see whether you're going to go to heaven or hell. Right. Or paradise or hell, I guess. Or the Dio Yi. Um, the second court is called the Pool of Filth and Hell of Ice, ruled by Chu Jiang Wang. Wait, if it's a pool, how is it? Is it just ice? Is it frozen? Is the whole thing frozen? Then it can't be like a pool of nasty sludgy water, which was what I initially thought it was. Maybe it's a drink, you know, like it's a pool of filth (laughs) with a hell out of ice in it. Oh, you cold sludge. Yeah, so maybe ice cold (laughs) sludge. Yeah. Mm. Sewage. So you enter this court as a bartender. <laughs> they only have one drink. It's called Sludge. Filthy ice. <laughs> mm. You gotta drink it. Yum. Salmonella. <laughs> yeah. So when you're done drinking the salmonella ice, you go to court number three, which is Black Rope Hell and Upside Down Prison. Ruled Black by rope. Song Ji Wang. Okay, so you're just strung up like bacon. I guess so. And you just kinda hang out? Yeah. Okay. And Song Ji comes in and tickles you. For a turn. <laughs> okay, that's bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wonder if they get those demons from Task Rabbit. <laughs> Looking for ticklers. <laughs> must be able to tickle for twelve hours. Eighteen dollars an hour. Must be must be eligible to enter hell. <laughs> Bring your own feather duster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Keep gear or whatever. Uh, I take that task. Yeah, it would be fun. Um, so after the upside down prison, you end up to court number four, which is a lake of blood and terrible bee torture, ruled by Wu Guan. Bee torture. Like, yeah. buzz, buzz, buzz. I guess so. I so. like pollen bees. Yeah. But what is a blood ha- a lake of blood? What would that have to do with terrible bee torture? I don't know. They don't really go together. I yeah. feel like they're just like, what are two bad things? And then they put it together. Yeah. Come on, Wu Gwen. Not, not that imaginative. <laughs> right. Yeah, you, you gotta tie these things together. Yeah. Unless oh. you're bleeding profusely from a bee sting, which I don't think you do. Yeah. No, I don't think you do. Maybe court number four is just a court of disappointment. Oh. Uh, so you go in and you're like, oh, that's it. Blood and yeah. bees. So that the torture is you're just unhappy and disappointed <laughs> about. Oh, it's like, you this is to- not sanitary. <laughs> You get to act like your parents. <laughs> we have a lot of parental issues, apparently. It's yeah. all coming out in this episode. Apparently, which I really don't. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I don't. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, all right, next. <laughs> anyway, court number five is the 16 departments of heart gouging. 16? Yeah, departments. <laughs> departments. Which is, yeah, ruled by Yan Wan again, I guess. Does it mean, like... Being having your heart torn out sixteen different times. Yeah, you know how like in some places there are the sixteen candles where it's like supposed to be a dance with sixteen dudes or something. So maybe this is like sixteen people who break. (laughs) (laughs) Ow, that kind of sucks. Yeah, that would be sad. Hmm. (laughs) I was thinking more like literal. Like, how many ways can I rip out somebody's heart? Like one, <laughs> you break your ribs and then you just take that sucker out. I feel like this guy's gonna go through it. He's like, "All right, you got sixteen heart gouges. How are you gonna do this? I don't know. It's always in the same spot. Yeah. So, you know. And he does it and he takes one out and he's like, "Oh, that's it." Yeah. And he tries I mean, it again. And maybe his dream is one day to have sixteen ways. Yeah. To- maybe some animals have sixteen hearts. And that's why he does this. Because I don't think it's only for humans. Oh, maybe. they torture animals too? I don't know, maybe. Okay, now I'm livid. Because I thought it was just human torture. I'm like, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> oh, I, think, I think they believe that everybody's entitled to reincarnation, oh, right? right. Next time I want to be reincarnated as a house cat. Mm, yeah, that'd be nice. 
feed me, yeah. pet me. You pet me too much. <laughs> Um, oh, and then after that, we go to screaming torture and administrative errors. <laughs> is this an episode of The Office? I, I, is this even real? Maybe I should have checked how real these sorts are. I don't read Chinese, so I can't really check these. Oh, yeah. Um, that just sounds like you're stuck in The Office forever. Yeah. Doing paperwork. Yeah. Administrative torture. You're eternally Us inviting the wrong people to meetings. <laughs> And you're a receptionist, yeah. just failing. Yeah, and you have your boss screaming at you, and you just, I don't know, I, I said blue pen, but we only have black pens. Where are those TPS reports? Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're going to pursue, so, we're going to run into negative this uh, quarter, <laughs> quarter, 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 something so, about quarters. The printer's not working again. <laughs> yeah, we need more paper. <laughs> toner, toner. Toner. <laughs> Paper jam, paper jam. Tone it. Tone <laughs> yeah, I think this one's by far the worst one. Yeah, this sounds terrible. Oh. It sounds like my job two years ago. <laughs> Ooh, how about this one? Court number seven. I'm pretty sure this is not real. <laughs> I feel like I was being trolled by this. I just found it somewhere. <laughs> anyway. We're just going to go with it. Get this. Court number seven is torture by... Oh, I thought it said torture by mimicking machine, but it actually says torture by mincing machine. Okay, that makes more okay. sense. Okay. <laughs> I thought, yeah, because mimicking mincing. machine would be like a five-year-old just copying everything he's saying. That would be... That would be absolute torture. Yeah, that would be terrible. It would be like bad to hit a kid, but I want to hit a kid. <laughs> yeah. It's like, okay, it might be not good to hit a kid, but what about shoving them down the stairs? Yeah. That's fine, right? <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Anyway, so it is torture by... <laughs> but it's mincing. Mincing, yeah. So I guess you get chopped up and put together over and over again. Mm, you will be meatloaf. Yeah. But like, you know, a sentient meatloaf. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which kind of sucks. But... Yeah. I like the mimicking one more. Yeah, no. Who's this? Taishan Wan. <laughs> can I... Can I Can I be can I submit... part of your world? <laughs> can I submit a request for... Change. Maybe we'll go through the last um, court and make one of your admin people do it. <laughs> and they type. You would it. think that the admin people would be level one. Yeah. Because they have to admit everybody in. True. It's like, what's the point of doing paperwork when you're already six levels of torture yeah. deep? There's also when you know that definitely a human wrote this. <laughs> yeah. Not from like a long time ago, but a modern human. <laughs> Sitting at their desk and they hate my job. Yeah, imagine a caveman trying to write this as a administrative error. <laughs> my tie doesn't match my socks. No. Mm. Mm. Fire. <laughs> Fire, not right. <clears throat> Need more. Fire. Get oh, wheel. Like Batman. Yeah, what? You I sound like Batman. Like, that they'd be deep voiced people. <laughs> um, so, court number eight then is um, hot suffocation hell. Hot suffocation hell. That seems pretty straightforward. Yeah. Just it's like hot. This sucks. Yeah. No air and it's hot. Yeah. I don't like that. It feels like Arizona. <laughs> okay, so court number nine is even worse than the administrative error court. <laughs> just court number six. It's Iron Web Office of Fair Trading and Better Business Bureau. <laughs> yeah, I'm being trolled by this. <laughs> There's no way <laughs> that that's a that's a thing. Who the hell? What? <laughs> I mean, a lot it, of office themed things. That's pretty terrible. But <laughs> what? Oh, we're like, good at fact checking. Like apparently, before we, before we invented the office life, <laughs> or maybe cavemen, maybe office life has just been part of humanity. It has. You never know. Yeah, they definitely this is, made this shit up. Yeah, but who knows? Maybe it's real. not on a Wikipedia. If, if, if anyone of our three listeners wants to check on this for us. <laughs> yeah, we're very we're tired sure humans. Yeah, we're not going to fact check this. <laughs> this is just... We're, what? We're, we exist. No one said we're an educational podcast. <laughs> no, we just talk about shit that yeah, we're we like the, We're like the early stages of Wikipedia where you could just say what you want and assume it's true. Yeah. And no one's gonna edit. Yeah. So there. And finally, we reach court number ten, the wheel <laughs> of rebirth. So I guess this is where you reincarnate yourself. Yes. 
Yeah. Um, but that sucks because you know you're gonna have to come back to do it through again. administrative help and the yeah. bus- Better Business Bureau. <laughs> but see, that's where um, Meng Po comes into play. Uh, yeah. She's like the end boss. Yeah, she is the end boss. Um, but if you ever want to actually go through all of this, apparently this you could enter the deal through the town of Fengdu, which is an ancient city in Kongqing, China. It's about a thousand Kong year old Chong? place. It's just a bunch of different temples and all that, which is apparently supposed to be the entrance to hell. Nice. Very Fengdu. convenient. Yeah. I definitely want to go check it out. Yeah, it seems pretty cool. There's a bunch of statues and whatnot. There's a thing. There's a bridge there apparently where you could see if you're going to hell or not. If you cross the bridge and not die, you get pushed off the bridge. Oh. You're going to hell. If not, then get pushed off you're by fine. whom? I don't know. A demon. <laughs> um, there's also a couple other bridges by that bridge that are like uh, the bridge of. There's more task rabbit taskers standing there. They're like pick like fifty percent of people and push them off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's also like the health bridge and the wealth bridge that you could cross for oh, health shit. and wealth. Health and wealth. Does know. it have to be one or the other? Can you have both? Maybe I don't know. Some people do, so I guess. Cool. Um, um. Yeah. Um. So, the reason why all of this happens, as we mentioned, is there's the last court, which is the wheel of rebirth, and this is where Mengpo comes into place and gets you ready for reincarnation. My homie. Yeah. So- for all those who don't know what reincarnation is, it's essentially just the belief that your soul or mind, or there's something that your continues essence. to live after you physically die. Um, and then that thing comes back again to a different, different body. physical thing, and you restart your life. Um, just, it depends on how you believe in it. I think um, some believe in reincarnation as you are a soul or a mind, an individual soul or mind that just floats. And comes back to a different one. Um, I think in some other places, which I think is what Buddhism believes as well, instead of it being an individual soul, you enter one stream of consciousness again, and from there you're pulled out. For anyone who plays Final Fantasy, I guess it will be like the life stream in Final Fantasy Seven, where everyone dies and all enters that stream again, and then from there life. Gets so does that mean removed. your individuality? Gets disappears yeah. dissipates yeah okay so that would be the difference of the buddhism belief from the other probably ones. Oh. um now every emo kid has watched evangelion the anime yeah it's kind of like that <laughs> yeah. i never actually um, finished that yeah at the end spoilers, spoilers everybody on earth except for emo child shinji right <laughs> gets like liquefied and uh-huh. turns into like one soup yeah that's pretty <laughs> much it cool then yeah i mean i'll go watch it it's very it got very abstract like yeah. when i watched it i was like eh, yeah i'm so edgy <laughs> and then i'm like i don't know what's going on <laughs> yeah, i just watch weird food anime we should do an episode about food anime dude. yes anything fun. miyazaki um Delicious. yeah true anyway um, <laughs> So the word reincarnation um, <laughs> derives from Latin, meaning entering the flesh again. Um, and I found out in Greek, it means, or it's, it's um, in Greek, it's a metapsychosis, which in, translated as, it's another trans word, mm-hmm. trans yeah. migration of the soul instead of trans. <laughs> Substantiation. Yes. That's the one. <laughs> we gotta stop bringing that up because we still can't. We just do can't do it. That's just a running joke now, I guess. <laughs> Trans. <laughs> Trans M. Um, so, yeah, so now this is all the how the whole hell and DAE works in uh, China. And as we mentioned, the last court has this lady called Meng Po. And Meng Po is it's her job to make sure that you're ready for reincarnation and to do that she has to make sure that you don't remember any part of your past lives so for her to do that she doesn't bonk you in the head or press a reset button she offers you tea what if you're like yo i hate tea bitch Yeah, well, you, you Give me should, coffee. Should, I, I, i'm assuming she'll turn into some terrifying monster just jam it in your mouth yeah <laughs> okay yeah, she'd be like, drink it, 
or I'll drink it for you. Oh, no, wait, <laughs> drink it or I'll make you drink it. Yeah, that's so. <laughs> I'll drink it for you. <laughs> she doesn't remember why she's it? there. <laughs> yeah, what happens? What happens if Mengpo drinks her own drink? Who's gonna? Hmm. Yeah, you think she ever stood there waiting for people to reincarnate and yeah. no one's coming? She's like, I'm bored and thirsty. Yeah. Like gonna... Any good chef, you have to taste your product. So. I don't think it matters because it tastes so. Even if it tastes super bad, they're not gonna remember as soon as they drink it. Yeah, fair enough. So I guess she's not really like a chef. She's just a nurse. Yeah, <laughs> a scientist or whatever. So yeah, she offers you this tea or soup called the Five Flavored Tea of Forgetfulness or whatnot, which is a mixture of just different herbs. Um, I couldn't oh, find. I exactly... was gonna say it's gin, tequila, vodka, rum, <laughs> and whiskey. <laughs> Put some Tabasco on it. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah, the ingredients are uh, barley. Um, rye. Rye. Potatoes. Potatoes. Agave. And... What's Bailey's made of? I'm just looking at your alcohol shelf. I'm like, oh. what else is alcoholic? <laughs> oh, sugar. Because of rum, right? Yeah. Oh, that. <laughs> yep, there you go. We've I've spent all week trying to find the recipe, but I think we just found we it. We just did it. <laughs> woo woo. Alright, so we're gonna make this one day and well it, shit. <laughs> okay, isn't that Maybe drink also called make... an audios mod- motherfucker? <laughs> yeah. Well there's and in the Philippines there's a drink called the Wang Wang, which is just a mixture of so many different things and they call it the Wang Wang. <laughs> because when you drink it that's how you feel. <laughs> wang Wang <laughs> Hey, that sounds good. I'm yeah. down to try it. Maybe that's why when, you, when you're when you born to a new life, you don't really function properly. It's not because you're a baby. It's because <laughs> you're hungover. <laughs> For many years. Yeah, you're just so super hung- hungover. <laughs> damn it, Meng Po. You party too hard. Yeah, it's like, yeah damn Meng Po. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, every soul has to drink this before they leave hell and enter a new life. Um, forgetting your past not only prepares you for your past life, but I guess it's also some sort of a symbol that you're cleansed of your past wrongdoings as well. You don't want to go through all of that hell just to know that you still are a fuck up. Maybe you do, I don't know. Um, so there's no better way of cleaning your wrongdoing by than just forgetting about it. So you can do it all over again because you yeah. can remember that you already did it. <laughs> yeah, which seems like every politician ever anyway. <laughs> We're just being political a little bit because the Canadian elections just happened and apparently somebody won. Or something. Uh, I don't know. Something happened. Yeah. Um, I, I just, voted, but... I, I did too. Nice. Uh, just... One regrets, uh, they don't have any I voted stickers. Oh, yeah. I never noticed that, Hello. too. Like, what do you think on. I'm doing this for? Yeah. To vote? There was a, there was no. One, I remember, when was that? I think it was eight years ago. They also gave lollipops. <gasps> what? I didn't get a single lollipop. But just some parent just complained. I had to drive very far to go like, to my polling oh. place. <laughs> I'm diabetic, so why can't I get a done? I don't know. <laughs> Here's your gluten-free cookie. Yeah. We're having voted. So whoever complained about those um lollipops, you deserve a special place. You in can just not take it. Yeah. You can say sorry, yeah. or you don't even have to apologize. You can yeah. just, say, but you, you know, know, being Canadian, What's apologize for everything. Um. Yeah, Bian Cheng from the. Court of Screaming, Torture, and Administrative Errors. It's going to haunt you for the rest of your life. <laughs> Whoever complained about the lollipops. Lollipops are not errors. Bet you it's a Karen. Karen, <laughs> you deserve a special place in administrative hell. <laughs> Got a paper push for eternity. Yeah. Anyway, back to China. Um, yes, I, I would assume that all of this is just part of the mythology. Um, there is some belief that some people have escaped drinking the tea. Um, so I guess experiences similar to like deja vu or feeling like you're living in a different body. The way they explain it is that you maybe not got drunk enough with the <laughs> Um It's also believed that Buddha himself escaped drinking um, the drink, which is why he remembers his past lives. Huh. Yeah, so that's pretty much it about Meng Po. Um, but as a whole... There really is a big significance about tea in China. Um, it's pretty big deal for them. There was this. I saw this thing about a Chinese saying that goes, "Firewood, rice, oil, salt, sauce, vinegar, and tea are the seven necessities to begin a day." Tea. Now yeah. you think it's because uh, 
It was accessible caffeine, source of caffeine. Maybe. Yeah. It actually it began as a medicinal thing. You could see in a lot of um, parts of China, that really, there's so much tea. I mean, you go to a Chinese restaurant, they offer, offer you tea. tea yeah. um, I'd rather have water. Yeah. <laughs> and for them, it's similar to um, wine, water. I guess, for us here, where there's like rituals and different things about you could drink tea, you could taste tea. Um, it's different. Like wine, you could taste wine or drink wine as well. You could enjoy the flavor, or you could just get drunk. Or get energy mm-hmm. or heal from it. Um, in fact, there's a whole art form of tea called the Gong, gong Fu Cha, which is, I guess, the Kung Fu of tea. Tea, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, Kung Fu just means like doing, lots of training doing stuff. to master, yeah. mastering a skill, and I guess Gong Fu Cha. Oh, is that why Gong Cha is called Gong Cha? I don't know. They, they think they're, <laughs> they're the cha. masters of I think tea? it's a different Gong. No. Oh. It's a different character. Done. Anyway, um, it's such a, in, in fact, tea is such a big deal in China that in 2002, someone actually paid somewhere between $28,000 to drink one cup of tea. What? Yeah. What's in this tea? It's like some, I can't remember what it was called, but in the Wuyan province, there was this special tree that only had specific number of lives left. Like there's not a lot of the mother main, the, like the original tree of it. Mm-hmm. So it's super expensive to just drink it. So someone just paid that much money just to drink that. But apparently the, there's a lot of non-mother trees. And they are pretty much the same. Similar, I guess. Not exactly this. Anyway. That's just crazy, man. <laughs> I could think of many other things you could do with 28 grand. Like yeah. That's, 200, that's 2,800 bottles of scotch. Yeah, huh. you don't get drunk. It's just leaf water, dude. Yeah. Um, it's leaf water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, so it's such actually such a big thing in China. It became a major export of China to Britain back in the day. Um, they, The English eventually bought so much tea from China that they were actually losing out on the trade because they were getting a trade deficit, mm. um, which eventually led to Britain trading opium to China, which started the Opium War. <laughs> which Britain won and caused Britain to eventually take hold of a certain place that's causing a lot of news right now. Hong Kong. Uh, Hong Kong was ruled by Britain because of tea. Dangerous substance. Yeah. Um, tea's such a big deal in China, the earliest recorded writing and mentions of tea came from China. Um, it's believed that the second emperor of China, Shan Nong, Nong, New Nong, Nong, <laughs> Just make all the sounds. All the One of them will be right. Um, he discovered, apparently discovered tea by accident. That a tea leaf one day fell on this poil, poil of polling, pot of boiling water. <laughs> and when he drank it, he surprisingly enjoyed it. Just from one? Just yeah. from one leaf? Yeah. Um, one leaf. Hmm. Maybe it was a bushel of leaves. I don't know. It must be very powerful. Or his, part, his, yeah. his boil of potting water. <laughs> Yeah. Must be a very tiny one. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a pretty small boiling pot. <laughs> boiling um, pot. But the person who did make tea famous in China isn't him, but Lu Yu, who's also known as the Sage of Tea. He's known as one of the first to write about the cultivation and creation of tea, and the book is called The Classic of Tea. It used to be a three-volume thing that they combined into one book now, I believe. Um, this guy was so intense about tea that he has the ability to tell the difference of the water used for tea. This one is from the ice sludge yeah. water bar. <laughs> and this one's from the lake of blood. <laughs> this one is just from your toilet. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there's this story about him finding this river with like super pure water that was perfect for the tea. Um, but he said that it was since it's river water, there's specific places in the river you should collect it from. And someone once returned water to him, and he said that it wasn't from that spot, and then he took some water out. Anyway, it was weird, but he apparently can tell the difference of water. Sounds like a wine snob. Yeah, it's a wine snob with water. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> dude, water come snob. on, man. It's just water. But I mean, I mean, people talk about, like, actually, we say that all the time when we went to Europe. Like, oh, I miss Vancouver water. Was Vancouver water, water is very good. Yeah. It's yeah, like, every other tap water I've ever had just had tasted bad yeah and wrong so yeah if you really i mean maybe he is right because if you travel around the world enough 
Like every country I go to, it tastes the water tastes kind of different. It does. So maybe he is he's on. He does there. have something there, Miraculous. but they also didn't have you know piping into cities and stuff yeah. back in the day. Yeah, and he's talking about like different areas of one river instead of countries. Yeah, that's subtle. It's he's real intense. subtle. Yeah, he he's is his wine snob. Back yeah. to back to talking about snobs. Yeah. This guy, I bet he's the type of person that'll take a sip of wine and be like, "This is very fruit forward." <laughs> <laughs> this is not enough tannins. <laughs> oh, could you taste that taste of oak? <laughs> it's, it's a fucking eight dollar bottle of wine, man. Just yeah, relax. Just relax. <laughs> just wanna get wine drunk? It's like, this is just Dasani, okay? Yeah. It's Thursday, and I wanna get wine drunk. Lou, you come on, man. Just <laughs> give me that bottle back. Lou, 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 Lou. Don't spit, spit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> in China, the most popular place for tea is from the Wuyi Mountain Range or the Yushan Province. And it's also known as the Tea City. It's where black tea was invented as we know it today. It's also where Dohong Pao is located. So Dohong Pao is the tea I was talking about that someone paid mm-hmm. 28 grand for. Yikes. Yeah, so there's only a specific number of Dohong Pao mother trees left. And you can't actually extract from it anymore because they're not producing as much tea leaves as before um, but there are a number of different dohong pao plants out there just the og ones are limited now so you could buy just more newer dohong pao leaves and they're cheaper but i'm assuming there's some like scam thing with people there nowadays as all leaf. things are yeah it's like the civet coffee episode yes. where the people just scam people for fake civet oh yeah um, um Today it's also known most for its oolong tea. Um, as teas in this region are said to have complex flavors due to trees growing in rocks, adding a mineral-like flavor to the teas. Um, as we're a food-based show, though, I want—I found that they had this really cool thing in the province called tea eggs. Oh, I love tea eggs. Yeah, so they're like these marbled eggs. It looks so cool. And I guess what happens is it absorbs the tea. The egg absorbs the tea. Um, I was looking up how to cook it. So apparently you... You just slow cook it. You cook the egg first as a hard-boiled egg. Then you crack the eggshell. But you don't... Um, you don't, you don't break, it break it open. You break the egg open. You keep the shell in. And then you pour it into your tea mixture. Then the egg still absorbs all of that after. And you get like a spider web effect when it you looks... actually peel the shell off. Yeah. And you add <laughs> things like anise, cinnamon, and tangerine zest to it as well. So good. Oh, it sounds so good. You know, they used to sell these at 7 Elevens in Taiwan. Really? Yeah. Mm. They just wow. have a pot right next to the cash register, like a, like a cock pot. Really? And then it's just filled with tea eggs. Oh. And then you. We should try to make this. Yeah, we this can do fun. it. Yeah. Um, so, Dohong Pao, um, apparently the name Dohong Pao comes from its translation is Big Red Robe. <laughs> and the uh, mythology behind it was this this guy who was going for like an imperial exam and on his way to the exam he got sick and this guy gave him this um, tea that came from the Dahong Pao tree um, and he got cured he got to the imperial exam he got he passed he got his became an imperial officer so once he got to become an officer he came back to the province and from there the guy gave him some leaves and he's like well shit I don't know how to bring this back to the place to the palace so he used his robe that he got from the imperial officer robe to wrap all the leaves around and the robe's a big red robe <laughs> that was the story <laughs> it's but a very literal they used, story <laughs> yeah they used the leaves eventually to cure one of the emperor's daughters or something so that's why oh. it became popular or whatnot this reminds me of the time i got into a car accident right before a final <laughs> but i didn't have any magical tea oh I, I, had some, came... I had some painkillers. <laughs> <laughs> Did you pass the final? I got an A. Oh, I okay. can't. I had Ativan, which is like an anti-anxiety. Right. So I was having panic attacks. Uh-huh. And then I had a bunch of painkillers. And then I was like getting too sleepy. So I'm like, I'm going to chug a Red Bull. <laughs> <laughs> so I did all of that in Red Bull. And I wandered into that exam. And it's in one of those rooms where it's like there's steps down. Right. It's like a lecture hall. I walked in, and I'm like, I can't do those stairs. <laughs> so I told him, like, teacher, can you pass me a test? Because I can't go down those stairs. I just went to an accident. I'm just going to sit 
in the back <laughs> here. <laughs> yeah, and then I aced it. It was pretty cool. That's pretty badass. <laughs> um, so Asian. <laughs> It's like, yeah, my shit's broken, but yeah. I need to go you, take you probably, my final. You probably came back with your report card or whatever. You're like, hey, I aced the car. Or I aced the test. Aced the and car. Your, your mom was probably like, but you broke the car. <laughs> D minus in life. Disappointment. It's like, yeah, but you went to film school. <laughs> <laughs> that should have been an A plus plus. <laughs> it's like, mom, they don't do pluses. I don't care. <laughs> Um, so yeah, with when it comes to tea, it's similar to I guess um, coffee, where it really just comes from one plant, um, the Camellia sinensis. Um, it does the Camellia sinensis does have a couple varieties in it, which is the sinensis variety and the Assamica variety. The difference being that the sinensis has smaller leaves and and are more capable to grow in lower temperatures, while the Assamica is have bigger leaves and can really only grow in warm temperatures. Um, it's also known that the sinensis grows mostly in China, while the um, Assamica grows in India. Um, there's not really one that's better or not, but I'm, I guess our Chinese overlords will say that theirs is better. Ah, yes, China forever. Yeah. Um, as we know, there are many different kinds of teas, um, one of which um, the varieties are really just kind of based on the way you prepare, oxidize, and process the teas. You could actually roast, steam, or pan fry leaves pan before fry. you... Yeah, I thought that was interesting. Um, so, yeah, it's just based on those different ways. So white tea is um, just subtle in flavor and delicate um, kind of tea. They undergo the least amount of processing. They're just kind of picked, withered, um, and then just dried. Mm. The next level from there is green, green. tea, yeah, which is um, a very popular. I think that's my favorite kind of tea is green tea. This type is the uh, one that most commonly is known to be the healthiest of all of them. And in fact, it could help reduce your risk of cancer, apparently. Allegedly. 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 Um, there are two main methods you could do to get green tea. You could either steam or pan fry it. Japanese green teas tend to be steamed and they're more bright and vibrant in color. While in China, they tend to pan fry it, um, which leads to a more pale or darker green color. Um, I love pan fried things. Yeah, but I didn't know that people pan fried tea. Yeah, it's interesting. So they dry it out and then they pan fry it. Um, nice. Next one is black tea, which in Asia is known more as red tea. Mm -hmm. um, red being because it's the color of the tea. Um, well, black meaning because the leaves itself are black. Mm, okay. Um, the tea. This tea is most popular more in Europe and South Asia. Um, they're perhaps the most common in. They're actually the most popular tea out there. It's my favorite. Yeah. Um, the processed teas here come into a different grading. There's a grading system when you process black tea as well. There's the full leaf teas and the broken leaf teas. Um, this is just how you crush or broke your tea. Obviously full leaf as you have the full leaves still to intact. While broken leaf is their broken. Leaf shards. Yeah. Um, the next one is oolong tea, which is... Um, the tea that has similar characteristics to green and black tea. Um, this one is probably the most complex tea to produce and create. And the best ones are known to be coming from Taiwan or China. Um, they require a lot of steps to kind of create. They could be lightly oxidized like green teas or highly oxidized like black teas. And the leaves are usually rolled up and balled up. Uh, oolong tea compared to other teas are really designed to be steeped multiple times allowing you to release a different flavor for each steep you do. So it's the kind of tea you put in your glass and take off after a few seconds instead of keeping it there the whole time. Um, yeah. This tea is probably what's used most in the Gong Fu Cha ceremonies um, to be able to enjoy the tea the most. And lastly, there is the pure tea or post-fermented tea. Oh, I like these. Yeah, these I've never actually tried these ones. It's subtle. Right. Yeah, so they're aged to improve the flavor. It's um, often really good for your body as well, like all teas are tend to be. Um, it's, I guess, common in China as well, right? Mm -hmm. um, and divided into two different styles. You could do it raw or cooked. Sheng or shu. Sheng, Sheng is shu. raw. Okay. Shou 
is cooked. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Um, yeah, so with this one, when the leaves are oxidized, there's still a moisture left in it, so you could kind of age it for months or years. And most of these teas are, ooh, they're sold in like a pressed kind of, so most of these pure teas are pressed in a cake-like sh shape. Cake? Um, mm. Yeah. Um, with a tea, the year of the tea stamp. So like wine has a vintage, I guess this one has oh, a similar cool. one. Mm -hmm. You could actually, some really older and well-aged tea cakes can go for thousands out in auctions or whatever. Ooh, would you still drink it, though? Yeah. <laughs> I saw this place perfect for pairing with a good cigar. <laughs> Maybe some wine in a stick. smoke it? Yeah. <laughs> smoke a tea. Steep your cigar and smoke your tea. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Full-flavored weird. That would be one thing to try someday. <laughs> And you can um, just dunk your whole cigar in the hot water and just kind of stir it. Yeah. Um, now, there's also um, a different form of tea, which are called herbal teas, um, which don't use the Camellia sinensis plants, which technically aren't teas by definition, but they also count as teas because they use different... It's just essentially just using a different herb yeah. for the tea. And there's also scented teas where you use the Camellia sinensis plant and mix it with other things as well. I'm not a fan of herbal teas. Yeah. Probably some of them are really good for you, but yeah. Eh. Yeah. No, they don't have the same warmth. Yeah. Um, in China, there's, I mean, like every other country has their ways of drinking tea. Uh, the Britons, the English do it with milk. Japanese drink it without adding anything. Um, I think China's similar. We don't really add anything either. Um... Like we mentioned, there's different cultural variations. The Gong Fu Cha ceremony is one that I think is pretty constant, though. It's pretty straightforward to learn, but there's I was reading up on the steps to do this. It's a lot of work. Like trying to it's a lot of steps to learn it, but they're pretty straightforward. It's just little things like how to angle your tea, how long you're gonna do it for. So it mm -hmm. doesn't require a lot of skill, it just requires a lot of memorization. Which feels like school. Yeah. No thanks. Yeah. Someone else do that and then give it to me. Yeah, right. Um, apparently there's this thing about lightly tapping your finger on a teacup as a way of saying Please thank you. Me. Yeah. Or like you hold it or something. Yeah, something like that. Um, so apparently that's a way to say thank you to whoever's serving tea to you. Um, apparently the history of that comes from the Qing Dynasty where the emperor traveled in disguise throughout the empire. And one of the, he was eventually serving tea to one of his um, soldiers or whatever. And the soldier wanted to thank him because he was such a, I guess it's such a big deal to be served by the emperor. He couldn't figure out how to do it. So he just tapped his fingers. <laughs> Seems rude. Yeah, but the emperor took it as a sign thanks. of thanks. Oh, nice. yeah. They'd be like, off with his fingers. Yeah. <laughs> Um, as we mentioned, there's a lot of health benefits for tea. I'm not even going to go through this because there's just so many. And you should just Google it, guys. Yeah, just <laughs> Google it. I'm sure everyone knows. The one thing I found really interesting about this is that no study has ever said there's a causational relation with his health benefits and tea. Hmm? So there's some correlational evidence to suggest that tea can improve your health, but no one's actually directly said that tea directly can cure cancer or tea can produce uh. so some say that the reason why tea could be good for you is generally speaking most tea drinkers are just healthier people live healthier lives so make healthier decisions in general than people who don't drink tea which i think in my mind maybe because you drink tea because you want to be healthy so then you make other decisions aside from just drinking tea right that do that for you um and the crow seems to agree yeah. <laughs> thank you crow uh. he agrees um, Drink some tea, bird. Yeah, so I thought that was interesting, which I think kind of makes sense. Like, I don't think teas are really the end-all, be-all um, medicine that can cure everything, right? But No, because we have other things now. <laughs> yeah, people tend to decide to drink teas because they want to be healthier, so it makes so sense. Leaf water instead of bean water. Yeah. Now. Or cocaine. Yeah. Well, we apologize for the bird in the truck. They're trying to fight for space in the background. 
It's garbage day. Yeah. It's, well, that's why it's they're all garbage day outside. Yeah. Like, Mom, get more ah. food. Ah. Um, but there is one kind of tea that is definitely not the healthiest for you. Bubble tea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my favorite. Yeah, so bubble it's, tea is very, very sugar. different from all these teas. Um, yeah, um, sometimes I wonder if bubble tea actually has any tea content. Yeah, there was this one we were looking like the brown sugar milk tea or whatever. Yeah. And we asked them, hey, what was on it? They're like, oh, it's milk. And sugar. And sugar. <laughs> like, wait, but... But where's the tea? There oh, they called no it tea. a tea latte. I was so confused because I'm like, so does it have coffee? Or tea. And he's like, no, it's just brown sugar, sugar and milk. And milk. <laughs> Wait, yeah, we're paying yeah. seven bucks for brown sugar and milk? Oh, yeah. And bubbles. I could just do that at home. If you want to make your own bubbles. Mm, we could. I usually order mine without. Yeah. So I'm not a big fan of the balls. Neither am I. I feel so sluggish after. Oh, I just don't eat it, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It's like last night when I went to High Five and got three pieces of chicken and i thought that would be good for dinner it was way too much i felt so gross all night <laughs> that's me every time there's crafty yeah. which means every day <laughs> <laughs> um so just to wrap everything up we always ask the question of is it good um well the forgetfulness tea if it's built if the recipe is accurate to what angel said it was <laughs> it probably tastes like shit oh yeah but you'll feel great yeah, for it's a short, short while. Tea, but you won't remember it anyway, so it's fine. Yeah. Tea in general, um, it depends how you like your tea. Um, I like green tea. I'm not like a big fan of tea. white tea. There was this one white tea I had. It was called Buddha's blend, but it was a mix. It was a blended tea because it had like, um, peaches and stuff. Mm. It's really good. Yum. Um, I do like my black tea too. Black tea is great. Green tea. I like Lady Grey. I do want to try that pure tea. It sounds cool. Pure? Puh? Yeah, pure. Pooty. Pooty. Poutine, though. Poutine? It's so good, too. Um, and I do like my bubble tea, too. What's your bubble tea order preference? I, every time is different. Yeah, me too. Because I like to try. And there's usually, like, a hundred things on a menu. Yeah. But bubble tea, you can never try them all. So you might as well try and try them yeah. all. Yeah. And they had that thing about, like, which bubble tea are you? They judge, <laughs> they judge you for which bubble tea order. I'm like... It's different every time. Yeah. It's different every I time. I do like... I think my... I used to only order one thing, and it's the right. pudding. Oh. Which literally has no tea in it. It's just flan. That's blended <laughs> into liquid. It sounds so You're good drinking and so flan. gross at the same time. And the fun thing is you can add pudding to your pudding tea. So you have... <laughs> It's the liquefied. Same so well, oh. you have liquefied pudding, but then you also have chunks of pudding on top. Wow. Yeah, that one was my favorite. Yes, yeah, so I guess that would count as an herbal tea. Yeah. <laughs> totally. <laughs> um. Yeah. What are you eating today? Uh, What's in your palate? I don't have anything planned today, because I'm not working today. <laughs> Therefore, I just probably won't be eating no crafty. honestly <laughs> yeah. what's the best thing you got in crafty during your show uh the last one i was on yeah. okay there was this weird cream cheese and corn dip that oh, they made it was so good they put some spices in it i don't mm. really can't really tell you what's in it but it was great i just ate it by the cup like you're supposed to they put breadsticks next to it so you're supposed to dip breadsticks into it right. but no i just ate that by the spoon <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> it was yeah. it was good. Well, like I said, I had fried chicken. <laughs> Three of them. Yeah, I can still feel it in my man boobs. <laughs> <laughs> they went straight straight into the boobs. Yep. And anyway, so that's our episode about tea and Mangpo. Mangpo's um, pretty chill. Your voice inspired, just got real spoopy. We're inspired by death. It's Halloween. <sighs> I mean, these episodes aren't coming out on Halloween, but... <sighs> You could always celebrate Halloween for longer. All the time. Yeah. It's my favorite holiday. Yeah. It's better than Christmas. Ooh, controversial statement. Yeah. <laughs>
This, this is smorgasbord. Have a food-related ritual, myth, or something strange you want us to explore? Send us a message through Facebook at Geek Happy Network. We'd love to hear from our fellow foodie listeners. And while you're there, remember to subscribe or follow us too. This show was created by Angel Lynn and Mick Narciso. Hosted by Angel Lynn and Mick Narciso. Editing by Mick and logo by Angel. Come give us a listen at geekhappynetwork.com or look for us on your favorite podcast app. Oh, and be sure to follow us on Facebook or Instagram at Geek Happy Network.